If there's one guy that I'm not worried about with the Philadelphia Eagles, it's Hassan Reddick. Because I know, you know, we all know, he's getting ready to go off. Thinking about here and hope everybody's having a great deal because I do want to be hanging in there and happy football Friday as we get ready for week three of the NFL and the Eagles are looking to show signs of life, signs of figuring things out as we get ready to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Monday Night Football and one of the biggest questions that I get all week or since the last time the Eagles played was What's wrong with Hassan Reddick? Where's Hassan Reddick? Is it his thumb? What is going on with Hassan Reddick? Why hasn't he done anything yet? Do we need to be worried? And my answer to you guys is absolutely 100% no. Hassan Reddick is getting ready to explode pause. Now, before we get into it, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, make sure you hit that like button. More importantly, make sure you subscribe to the most censored. The most throttled pause Eagles content career in all of the internet. And if you've been subscribed for a while, I just want to thank you so much and ask. Just make sure you're still subscribed, your notifications are turned on, YouTube's been acting weird. So double check, double moonwalk check. Make sure everything is still good to go. And uh, let me thank everybody who was in my uh, stream last night watching the 49ers and the New York Giants. Uh, what a debacle. I can't even say it was a good game because, really, the Giants stink. They stink. They're lucky they're not 0-3. This is a team that should really be 0-3. And I thought the 49ers didn't even play that great a football game. I thought uh, Brock Purdy could have thrown three interceptions on the first drive alone. Uh, yet, they still put 30 up on the Giants like it was nothing. And the Giants are not the same team that played the first six quarters of the season when they played Dallas in the first half of Arizona. They got it going at least a little bit, and they still stink. Daniel Jones is bad. He's bad. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. But I want to thank everybody who hung out with me last night. I had a lot of fun. It was a blast. Now, as we go into week three, uh, I'll be doing a preview prediction video um, sometime either this evening or... Or in the morning, uh, we'll see when I get it finished editing and stuff. I really want to see what the injury report is going to show today. Um, there was a lot of talk and concern about uh, Devontae Smith being limited in practice. He had a hamstring and tightness. Um, I'm not really concerned about it. From everything I was reading, it really sounded like they were just being overly precautious with Devontae Smith. He's a big part of our offense. Uh, I think Devontae Smith is going to have such a big year that when it's all said and done, people are going to look at him and say, he is a top five wide receiver, no question about it. Devontae Smith is that good. Um, so, you know, I do want to see if he shows up on the injury report. I want to see where Bradbury is, where Blankenship is. Uh, it's going to be important to get these guys back. Listen, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think this game is just some game that you walk in and you just run over Tampa Bay, and then, uh, you know, by the second half, we're sitting back up 35-3. to I think this is going to be a tougher game. Tampa Bay is playing good ball right now. They have a pretty good defense, and the Eagles, they look like, uh, really, they've been rusty. I, I thought in the second half of that Minnesota game that they, the offense started to basically knock off the rust a little bit. But it's a big test. It is. And and one of the people that, that everybody's worried about is Hassan Reddick. And I really think... Hassan Reddick will be fine. If you look at Hassan Reddick, you look at it pre previous years, uh, he, he's he's very streaky. Um, he'll have periods in which he just goes off. And then he has periods where he's a little quiet. And if you remember last year when he was playing with the Eagles for the first time, we dealt with the same questions with Hassan Reddick after the first two weeks. Matter of fact, after the first two weeks last year, Hassan Reddick had zero sacks. We had zero sacks versus Detroit, and he had zero sacks versus the Minnesota Vikings. I, I think that Hassan Reddick is pretty much just on the same trajectory. Uh, is his thumb playing a part in it? I, I don't know, maybe a little bit. I can't say that it's not. Uh, but but Hassan Reddick has done this before. Um, 
when Hassan Reddick gets going, though, uh, he's dominating. He's absolutely dominating. I thought he should have been considered for Defensive Player of the Year last year. And I think single-handedly in the playoffs versus the Giants and the 49ers, he completely took over those games. Uh, I think Hassan Reddick's a great player, and I don't think we need to be that worried about him. But I understand why people are, right? I'm going to explain and show you guys some stuff about him that make maybe make you feel better. And then I'm going to tell you my actual real concerns about this team going into the week, okay? Uh, it's actually, I, I didn't realize this, but doing this video uh, this morning, now, it's actually Hassan Reddick's birthday. Not like a Jerry Jones birthday, who is his birthday too. He just turned 6,017 years old. Happy birthday, Jerry Jones, 6,018 6, years old. Got to be tough being 6,019 years old. But um, Hassan Reddick actually is having a birthday. At, at, you know, st uh, still on human time. Um, and not on warlock time like uh, Jerry Jones, but on human time. And uh, he's actually turned 29 today. So happy birthday, Hassan Reddick. Uh, the one guy I am definitely not worried about. Now, look at this. This is last year, right? I want to show you guys this. This is last year. Here's Hassan Reddick sacks by the month, okay? So in September, Hassan Reddick last year had one and a half sacks for the month of September. Um the first two weeks versus Detroit and versus Minnesota, he did absolutely nothing. He had one and a half sacks versus Washington, I believe was week three, and uh, that was the first we got from him. Then in October, he comes on a little stronger. He has four sacks. November, he has two and a half sacks. December, I don't know why they have January in front of December, but in December, he goes off. He has six sacks in December and two sacks in January. So from week 10 to the final week of the year, he had 10 and a half sacks. He did most of his damage then. Um, and if you go back to even previous seasons, uh, there's, there are months where he has no sacks, and then there are months where he has like six sacks. So Hassan Reddick, he gets, he gets very streaky, and when he gets going... He absolutely gets going. So I, I would not be concerned right now with Hassan Reddick. Um, he, he could definitely go out this game and pull out two sacks, and then everybody's going to forget the two weeks. It's basically what happened last year. Uh, I expect Hassan Reddick to get going. Hassan Reddick's a great player. This is a guy who has had three double-digit sack years on three different teams. And though they've had some good players on different teams with him, they were still different teams. That is a pretty remarkable statistic to have. So I expect Hassan Reddick to get going. I wouldn't worry too much about Hassan Reddick. Um, I think he'll just be fine. Uh, I expect him to have a big game actually Monday night. Uh, I expect a lot of guys to, to that, that maybe we haven't seen a lot from so far to have a big game. I think A.J. Brown is 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 set up for a monster game. I, I really do. Um, Devontae Smith has already had two big games as far as I'm concerned. I think he'll continue to do his thing. But, you know, when it comes to those receivers, one week you're going to get A.J. Brown, one week you're going to get Devontae Smith, one week A.J. Brown, one week Devontae Smith, and then Dallas Goddard, you're going to sprinkle him in there, DeAndre Swift, all those things. So I wouldn't worry about Hassan Reddick. I think once Reddick gets going, with the, with the great play you're getting from your defensive tackles, Davis and Carter, uh, I think the Eagles' defensive line will really will get it going. The other thing that, that you know, when, when you look at the defensive line and you look at sacks, one thing we have to acknowledge that teams are doing is they're getting rid of the ball really quick. I mean, it, it, I, I would love to know what the average um, – the average time quarterbacks are holding the ball with the Eagles. I bet it's like one, it's like one, two, one, two out, one, two out. It's like that ball's out quick, okay? Um, and their teams are going to keep doing this because they're scared of the Eagles' pass rush, which to me uh, tells me that the, the secondary's got to give that defensive line help. I would like to see them press a little more, play up on the receivers a little more, and, and just try to get the quarterback to hold the ball a little longer. Perfect example is in that Monday night game, there was a play where Josh Sweat forces a fumble. If you look at that play, 
Reddick is, I mean, uh, Cousins is looking right at Justin Jefferson, but defense player slide over uh, in the lane of where he wanted to go with that ball, forcing Cousins to just have to hold on that ball a little, little bit more, which allowed Josh Sweat to get home. So I think the secondary, in, in this case, actually could help the defensive line out uh, by, by getting the quarterback just to hold the ball a little longer so some of those guys can start getting home, one of them being Hassan Reddick. Hassan Reddick will be just fine. Now, uh, when you look at things that I actually are, are concerned about going into this game, I'll give you a couple things. Besides the special teams situation, which I'm talking specifically about Kobe, we replaced Sippo, so we'll see how this man kid is punting the ball. He can't be worse, right? I don't think he could be worse. Um, but I do worry about Britton Covey. Fumbled the ball last week. He scares me. Scares the hell out of me. Um, secondly, I, I'm worried, of course, about the middle of the field with the linebacking depth and at the safety position. I would like to see City Brown get more snaps. I would like to see, uh, hopefully, we'll get Reed Blankenship back. That'll be big for us. If you get Bradbury and Blankenship back on the secondary, I think that'll be great. Of course, you got to be concerned about how they're going to handle the slot corner position. And then um, another position not a lot of people have talked a lot about partially because the Eagles offense has struggled but uh, we have seen absolutely zero zilch nothing from the third wide receiver uh, what are we going to get from that are we going to get any production or is this going to be a situation where we really are in need of a third wide receiver uh, those positions concern me much more than Hassan Reddick going into this game I expect Reddick to have, I think Reddick has two sacks this game coming up. I think he'll be fine. But will Quez Watkins get any production? Will Oz get any production? Uh, and and that's what I really worry about. Uh, and we're going to find out soon. Got to play Monday. Uh, of course, a reminder, I am streaming Cowboys game Sunday, Eagles game Monday. Uh, so come out and hang out. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, and I should have a preview prediction video out sponsored by DraftKings uh, later on either tonight or early tomorrow with that said take care talk to you later of course don't be a dingbat remember it's how we vision we're all just living in it according according to the last injury report that came out we had nine players uh, limited practice. Devontae Smith, James Bradbury, Reed Blankenship, Josh Sweat, Kenneth Gainwell, Fletcher Cox, Jordan Davis, Zach Cunningham, and Jack Stahl. I have to assume, being that it's Monday Night Football, that every one of those guys are going to play. I would think every one of those guys limited should play, hopefully will play, and I see Kenneth Gainwell's going to come back. Uh, I'm not saying don't give him the ball, but do not forget about DeAndre Swift and how good he was. With that said, Denzel Washington out.